This week on Weapons Wednesday, we're going to be featuring Kung Fu Challenge, testing Chinese weapons with Sifu Rick. Now, for those of you that don't know, that's my forte. Chinese weapons, Kung Fu, Tai Chi, that's my jam. Now, before we get into the weapons, I need you to like and subscribe. That would be awesome. Now, you may notice that things look a little different. You don't see the tatami mats behind me, right? You see this wall of weapons. This, this is here in my, in my, my martial arts studio. Um, I was talking to Kyle, and he asked me, what is something that you want to do? And I said, you know, one of the things that I've noticed that I haven't seen Karate Mark do is feature their, their kung fu weapons, the Chinese weapons on there. So he started digging through the warehouse and he sent me some stuff for you to see. Some things that you probably know, three, one thing that you know that is a Chinese weapon, one of them you're going to go, huh, can that be a weapon? And the other one, I've, I've shown some similar stuff already. Now, as always, I need you to go to the community tab at the end of the video and you tell me which one of these three weapons will make the deadliest kung fu weapon. Here we go. The first weapon I'm going to show you is the aluminum dragon fan. Before I pull it out of this really nice um, carrying case, I have to give a bit of a warning. If you're wearing headphones right now, you might want to pull the volume down. You might want to take the headphones off because it can get really loud. Now, it is an all aluminum construction. These ribs in the back or all these blades are unsharpened. Its full length is 13 and a half inches long. Its width closed varies from about a half inch to an inch and a half you know, that's tapered on the end. The entire width open is 24 inches. It's got this really cool dragon on here and a phoenix on there. And the entire weight is 8 ounces. Now, I said it's loud, so I don't know if the mic's going to pull this. But yeah. So one of the things with the fan. We train fan usually with Tai Chi. Um, there is in some Kung Fu forms. But with the Tai Chi, we tend to do more on Chen style than Yang style. Now, Chen style, you're going to be like building energy and then exploding with energy. And the fan kind of helps you to develop that power. You guys know Bruce Lee's one inch punch. Chen Tai Chi basically is that. So if I'm going to open the fan, anybody can do that. But with power, it goes here. Little pop and it opens. Now, and close. That's why I was saying you got to watch the noise factor on this. Okay, so I brought my helper in. I also gave him a weapon to, to fight against. So one of the things that we do with our fan is we can block this weapon. So open, and I can turn out like this, and then I can kick. I could come across and then strike there, right? All metal or aluminum construction allows me to jab pretty hard and not affect the fan at all. These are the fans. These exact fans are the ones that I purchase for my students here at my school. They're a lighter weight than the other fans out there. When you're practicing some of these, your hand starts to cramp pretty hard. And I have found over time that these fans tend to hold up better than all the other fans out there. So, back in the day, each of these ribs, each of these blades in here, used to be sharpened. So they would have a little point on there. 
so not only when I jabbed here that it would actually puncture if they were open I could scrape across or scrape across this way fan makes an amazing self-defense weapon so let's get to showing you how this thing works in a now for obvious reasons I cannot show you an entire form I'm just gonna show you snippets All right, so the next weapon I have for you guys is the indestructible plastic hook cane. Now, I've tested at least two other canes for Karate Mart. You can see one back over there right now. This one, overall length, 38, 39 inches. Um, it's made of virtually indestructible fiber-filled nylon. The weight's about one and a half pounds. It's got a little textured grip right here and then also at the end. I don't know if you guys can, I'll get some closer views of this. Now, this hook, it's sharpened up here and it's got this rubber toe that's, that's also on that cane over there. Now, if you can see in my background, you can see at least two other canes. So I've got the one that Karate Mark sent me and then I've got one that we use in, in our martial arts training. But when I first learned, I learned on a cane exactly like this. You would swing it here, you'd come up, you hook in. Now look what happened when I hooked on there. It got right into the back of his, his neck. If it was catching an arm, he'd hook the arm. You can block a weapon with this. That little hook on there makes this pretty effective. I'll show some more stuff with this weapon outside. I really like the weight of this, the feel of this. This one, for me, is a little bit tall, but on most of these weapons, you can take the foot off and make it a little bit shorter so that it will fit you better. Because it's nylon, you can adjust it. There's some little places on here that you can cut with this. I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. You can cut in here to make this shorter for you. So, the indestructible plastic hook cane is a pretty cool weapon. If you've seen my last two videos here with Karate Mart, I've featured two different uh, canes. A sword cane and then the survival, the survival walking stick cane. This one is completely different. This is an all one piece um, cane. And you notice that when I'm walking with this, that I have the hook side toward you. Most people will walk with their cane in this manner. But if you put it this way, you've got more, more leverage that way. You see how kind of... So you got more leverage coming underneath it that way. can swing around pretty easy, catch, and then come down with that hook part of it. You catch it and pull, turn around and pop with the other side. Canes are one of those secret weapons that you can pretty much get anywhere. This one being an all plastic indestructible, probably be able to get this just about any place with this with this cane so if you're in need of a cane this is a great one it's very strong I mean I'm putting my weight on top of it and you can see that it's bending just a little bit but it's holding me up so when most people start kung fu the weapon that they usually 
want to do, the one that most of my students see, are the tiger hook swords. You can see them up on my wall. It was probably the first weapon that when I got to a higher level that I really wanted to learn because, hey, we see it in the Kung Fu movies all the time, right? Now, these one piece construction, 440 stainless steel with the brushed finish on there, black nylon cord handles. The dimensions are about 33 and a quarter inches. The blade is 21 inches. That blade here, I'm gonna put it in one hand. The blade here is sharpened. 21 inches, the hand guards eight inches. Each sword weighs about one and a half, one pound, 11 ounces, and they're always sold in pairs. The guard is sharp, bottom's sharp. You've got this blade here. I have to test this one outside. One of the things that I see a lot of people do, and I don't like it, is hooking and then swinging this around you. For me, that makes that weapon very loose on here, and then you lose control of that weapon. If I'm swinging it around, if it were to hit something, it's going to go loose. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you how to swing it, and it, it, it can be dangerous, but we are going to, to test it. Now, these ends up here are also sharp. Guarantee we're going to chop stuff with this one. So Chinese hook swords, you can find them on Karate Mart. What's with the crescent shape here? That crescent shape, you're going to block stuff. So a weapon's coming at you. You can block in here and come over the top with the other hook. Come underneath. You can catch this way. Imagine getting caught with that hook on there. What you usually see is hooks coming here, coming up and under, coming around, jumping over the top with this. Tiger hook swords are amazing and a formidable weapon. Now I've got to back up so I can do the next one. You see a lot of people do this in forms. They'll hook it, and they'll start swinging it around them and then try to catch it. And you saw how hard it was for me to catch that as it came around. I don't know if you saw that when I did this, that other blade wasn't really the one that was going. Basically, I'm just swinging this metal sword around them. So if it gets hit, guess what? It could come back and bounce and get me. We're gonna try this outside. But anytime I spin it, it's not really the guard going around. It's just looking cool. Extending my reach, it, it, it definitely extended my reach, but that's something that we never train here. I know some schools train it, but we never train hooking and spinning the sword around, around here like that. Just want to dispel that out there for you guys. What is a lot is that push and catch. Catch here, push, catch, cutting underneath, cutting over top, double spin in both directions, or cutting across like that. This is my fav one of my favorite weapons to play with. My training weapons, are unsharpened and they're unsharpened because I always end up catching my arms with these that's just me I've gotten very used to my swords these are wonderful they feel great in my hand we'll go outside and play with these a little bit and go cut some stuff all right so as I said we're gonna test these out and see how sharp they are so got a spaghetti squash it's going to come right across here. <laughs> that was too easy. Way, way too easy. All right, so we're going to try another one, which is cutting across here like this.
<laughs> I caught my pole, but check that out. It got stuck right there. So let's give it a try again. All right, so let's try it again. Whew. Huh. Now, I purposely chose this squash because it's a little bit stiffer than most other squashes. But <laughs> it gets in there pretty. Wow, that's kind of cool. So I said I was going to do the hooking one. I kind of have an idea of what's going to happen. So let's give it a try. So we come here, you grab, spin. Can't really tell I hit right on there. Let's try it again. That is what I knew was going to happen right there. You saw, but the cabbage went all the way off that way. We're going to have now, there was no real damage done to the cabbage. So let's chop it. Watch out, doggies. I moved the pup. You got it. So let's, let's chop it. easy cut right in half cut in two all right so i thought of this once i cut that cabbage we're gonna hit this half head with the fan just right here on the side so we can see ready <laughs> completely destroyed it Dogs are going to have fun. So, butternut squash with the fan right here on the side. Let's see what happens. Ready? Put a little bend in my fan. Let's hit the other side. <laughs> Still works. It's got a good bend in it. Nothing that I can't bend right out of it but we got to cut it so now just the push here good little cut in there but nothing like these this, no no issue whatsoever but I got one more all right, so let's see what the cane does to it. Again, we got to go to the tiger hooks. So I'm going to do an offhand. I've done here, now an offhand cut. easy i like these swords these are cool now i want to thank you guys for watching this video i can honestly say that in my 23 years of kung fu training i've never taken a fan and hit it that hard against anything and i was really really happy to see that that fan held up as well as it did it makes me glad that i'm i'm choosing karate mart for my weapons for my students. Now, again, don't forget to go to the community tab and vote for which one of these three weapons you think makes the deadliest Kung Fu weapon. Until next Wednesday, we'll see you in the comments.